Jesus is glorified. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. God, God's people are built up and we decree that by the end of this service we'll all be the better for it. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the world naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, and every believer says a powerful amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service this morning by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, our brothers online. We're so glad to have all of you in the service this morning and we're excited to see all of you online connected. We also want to welcome the Aquai Bomb State community connected to this service by way of Comfort FM, XLFM Radio, Aquai Bomb Passion, Inspiration and Heritage FMs. We're so glad to have all of you connected to the service. Do me the favor of calling a friend, a family member, a neighbor, ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We also want to ask our social media community, we are committed to reintroducing Jesus to this generation until all the nations of the earth are flooded with the truth of God's, of God's grace. So help us share the videos, put them on as many groups as 50, 100, get the word around the world. And thank you for always making this happen. We want to welcome all our campuses around the world brothers and sisters wherever you're connected around the world this morning whatever the time is in your country we want to welcome you to the service guys get ready we're going to have an exciting study of god's word are we excited to be in church this morning can we celebrate the word of god with a shout glory amen Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible, and your phones. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Let's get in the word of God this morning. Uh, uh, uh. All right, we've been on this since the year begun, and we're going to be here for a bit, a bit some more. Uh, we've been on the 40 days of fasting and prayer, and um, it's been exciting. Are you enjoying yourselves? It's been really exciting praying and just listening to God and growing in the things of God and walking in the plan, the purpose, and walking in the will of God for our lives. I'm truly excited. You know, it's really an amazing time. We also want to, you know, um, mention that since we started, we've been looking at Brother Paul's revelation of identification. We've been looking at the in Christ realities. And this is season three. We did season one some years ago, season two last year, where we talked about the Old Testament and we talked about Jesus' use of parables. Why did Jesus use parables to communicate? And then we also looked at the epistles and their relevance as they play hand in hand with parables. But this time around, we're looking at the unique revelation of Brother Paul as it tallies with the teaching of Jesus taken from the theology of Moses to establish the consistency of theology in the Bible. We are studying the revelation, like I said, of Brother Paul's identification. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, let's hear what Brother Peter says about the revelation of Brother Paul. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So Peter acknowledges Paul's letters, and that's why he calls them epistles, that there's wisdom given to him. So he calls the writings of Paul Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, an insight or an expertise. Paul writing the same information to Timothy, his own son in ministry, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15, he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Makes you wise. 
So Paul is expecting that the knowledge of information by Timothy will give Timothy as it were the same status he had with the holy scriptures. Make you wise. So whilst Peter uses the word Sophia to, uh, to identify Paul's writings, Paul uses the word Sophizo. S-O-P-H-I-Z-O Sophizo. That is when talking to Timothy, he now says that Timothy has the ability to now be clever. Sophizo. And be skillful and act like an expert in a matter. Now Peter says that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Again, that means that Peter uses the word long suffering to mean salvation. Long suffering to mean salvation. That's quite something to study because it's one of those ways the root, you know, and the one, the one phrase there represents a series of actions. Like I told you about the shorthand. Okay, one phrase represents a series of actions. Of course, if you read First Peter, he talks about the days of Noah, and then Second Peter chapter two, he brings in that same fact: the days of Noah. He talks about the 120 years figuratively as it were represents the long suffering of God. The 120 years in the days of Noah figuratively represents the long suffering of God that he was referring to. And so he says it's salvation. And he says to us that this is exactly what Paul was writing. So notice the word long suffering. The word long-suffering is the capacity to wait. It's not suffering long. It's the capacity to wait. The word suffer actually means experience or to allow. Suffer, experience or to allow. So to allow for long. Long-suffering. To allow for long. And the length of time figuratively was 120 years. And interestingly, Paul did use that word to explain salvation. He used the word long suffering. It is the word makrotuma, makrotumia in the Greek. Makrotumia, spelled as M-A-K-R-O-T-H-U-M-I-A. Makrotumia. In Romans chapter 2 verse 4, you see how brother Paul uses that word. Romans chapter 2 verse 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance and long suffering. Brother Paul used that for salvation. That long suffering is the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Now please pay attention. And he calls that goodness of God. What leads men to repentance. Then in the same Romans. Chapter 9 verse 22. Brother Paul uses that word again. Long suffering. What if God willing to show his wrath. And to make his power known. Endured with much long suffering. The vessels of wrath. Fitted to destruction. All right. Then in First Timothy one sixteen, brother Paul uses that word again. First Timothy chapter one verse number sixteen. How be it? For this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which shall hereafter believe on Him to life everlasting. Again, he connects it. To salvation. Now, so again, he talks about the motion of salvation and receiving it as long suffering. Peter also, let's hear Peter out. Like I mentioned earlier, he used the story of Noah to explain this. In First Peter chapter 3, verse number 20. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 20. Which sometime were disobedient when once. The long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. So again, long suffering there becomes God's waiting or God's action in the details of salvation. God's waiting 
or God's action in the details of salvation. And so he said that this is what Paul wrote to the church. And so he mentions that Paul has that insight. In other words, has the insight to look at the Old Testament narratives. Paul had the insight to look at the Old Testament narratives and explain the salvation of God. And that's something Peter said, I want us to think through this. He didn't say that Paul came to it by prayer. He said, no, God gave it to Paul by insight, Sophia. And so it shows the office of Paul in that regard, his office. Our job and our duty is to study what he wrote, to study what Paul wrote. That's our job, to study what he wrote. And so he said, this is an insight given to him. In fact, Brother Paul himself said in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. Next verse. How that? By revelation, he made known to me the mystery. As I wrote a four in few words. He called all his epistles few words. Next verse. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge, personalized, in the mystery of Christ. That is Paul's office. And when we know what, he is, what, what is written, which is salvation, through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, we become skillful, sophizo, in what he has written. So let's investigate further the how of this insight of Paul. The how of this insight of Paul. If you have been following this series, we have been investigating what Paul put together. In fact, if you were not in church on Friday... And yesterday, go get the material quickly because yes, on, on Friday and yesterday, we looked at the proper explanation of faith. The proper doctrinal scriptural truth about faith. Not some of the crazy things people are teaching everywhere and all of that. You need to listen to it because it, it's a mind shift. It will help you a lot with an understanding of faith from Jesus' teaching and the Pauline theology. And if you didn't listen well, go back and listen carefully because it's very instructive and key to Christian doctrine. It's very important. Now, let's look at the book of John, chapter 16. But before that, pay good attention because this is a verse that has largely misled some people who didn't pay attention. Now, in study, you must always take cognizance or pay attention to the background of what was written. You must pay attention and look at things like who was it written to? Who was it written to? What was he talking about? Who was it written to? Background. What was he talking about? For example... In John 16, Jesus was talking to those he would later call his witnesses. In Luke 24, 49, put it up for me, Luke 24, 49, look at what Jesus said to a group of people. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. He's addressing a specific group. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. This is not for everybody. This is not for Christians because we don't tarry in Jerusalem. So the background here is, is addressing a group of people. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Then Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He's still talking to this group of people that brother Luke was talking about in Luke 24. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem where he told them to tarry. This same group of people. You shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So he's addressing 
a specific group of people in this context. Now, and those are the people he will choose. According to what Peter said, that, that will happen. Acts 10, 40. Look at the way Peter said it in the house of Cornelius. Acts chapter 10, verse 40. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Now look at me, everybody. How many of you know that when he said he showed him openly, not everybody saw Jesus after resurrection? How many of you know that? There were specific people Jesus appeared to. Specific. And these are people that he gave the privilege of being witnesses of his resurrection. These are the people he gave the privilege to now teach his resurrection and lay the foundation of doctrine. This is very important. Please don't ever miss this. And these are the people we call foundational apostles. They were only 12 and when they died, nobody else is added to that group. No apostle belongs to that class. There are 12 of them foundational. Okay? Today what we have are apostles of his resurrection. Now, pay attention to that Acts chapter 10 verse 40 again now with this background. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Next verse. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen. Witnesses chosen before of God, even to us. Who are the us there? Peter and his colleagues. Who did eat physically and drink with him physically after he rose from the dead. These are the privileged 12. Remember, when he rose and appeared in the room without window and door, they say it's a spirit. He said, handle me. A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see me have. They touched him and they said, no, it's still a spirit. He said, do you have food? And they brought him boiled fish and he ate. So they ate with him. They, these are selected. This is not everybody. These are the privileged people that were given the privilege to witness his resurrection and teach it. Now, put that scripture back up again for me. That Acts chapter 10 verse 41. Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Next verse. And he commanded us to preach and unto the people and to testify that it is he which, God, which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. 43. To give to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Verse 43. Remission of sins. Now while Peter yet spake this word the Holy Ghost fell on the Gentiles the same way the Holy Ghost fell on the Jews on the day of Pentecost. Did you observe that nobody laid hands? On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came. Okay? Among the Gentiles, while Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell. Same experience because there's no dichotomy. Same experience. Because there's no Jew, there's no Gentile. Are we communicating? Now, pay attention. So these people were the ones he wrote John 16, 7, 2. John 16, 7. Put it up for me. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you, that specific group, that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus is not talking to everybody here. He's talking to a group of people. Are you following? A group of people. I'm going to give you some things to think about because we're going to look at the pronouns. The pronouns. Because the pronouns will help us in figuring out what Jesus was saying on the face of it. 
Look at that John chapter 16 verse 8. John 16 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The word reproof there is the word convince. He will convince the world. Now when he says he will convince the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It appears like you will just sit down in your room and the spirit will meet you there and convince you. That's the way it looks like from what is written. You know that this is not what he's saying there. So whatever he is saying from verse 8 to 10, let me read verse 8 to 10 again. John chapter 16 verse 8 to 10. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin because they believe not on me. Next verse. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Next verse. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Mm. Now, you know that this is not what he's saying that the spirit will just enter your room and convince you. Everything he's saying there is the doctrine of Christ. Everything he's saying there is the doctrine of Christ. Convinced of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That is the doctrine of Christ. Is the message that should be preached. The message that should be preached. It will convince, it will affirm, it will show the judgment of the prince of this world. You know that this is what he is talking about. That means, if an unbeliever will be convinced of sin, the spirit will not do it. It will be done via communication. If an unbeliever will be convinced of sin, it will be done via communication. So this will help us to see how that communication will be done. John 16, 12 now and 13. How that communication of convince the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will guide you into all all of this truth actually he will guide you into all of the truth he was referring to remember I go you see me no more of sin of righteousness of judgment so if we are going to really look at what he was saying it will be he will guide you into all of this truth. And this truth will be specifically what he mentioned in verse 8 to 10. The truth will be convinced of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now, that John 16, 13, a bit of carefulness is needed there. John 16, 13 again. Let me read because I want you to follow carefully. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. We are going to do a little a bit of careful work on the pronouns in that verse. All right, looking at it in the overall light of the truth of scripture. He will not speak except what he hears. That makes the spirit a learner, which is uncalled for. Because if you 
have read, he is the spirit of truth. You will notice that the spirit of truth refers to the indwelling of the father. The spirit of truth refers to the indwelling of the father. The indwelling of the father can't be what learns. It has to be what teaches. The father is not learning from anybody. So the pronouns there has to be adjusted. So when he says, because there's a syntax situation there, when he says, he will guide you into all the truth, he uses what we can call a demonstrative pronoun. Ekenos in the Greek. E-K-E-I-N-O-S. Ekenos. Is what he uses. A demonstrative pronoun. So, is demonstrative of what he has said earlier. Now, it's safe to say he is the same person. But the truth is that what he was putting across is demonstrative of a discussion that had happened earlier, which is verse 8 to 10. Then he says, For he shall not speak of himself, it will look like, what are you saying? If the spirit of truth is the indwelling of the father, according to, you know, what is said in John 14. John 14. He is with you. He will be in you. Alright? John 14. And he said, in that day, you will know that I in the father... The Father in me and I in you. You will know that the Father is in you. And then he now says, he shall not speak of himself. That means that he that will not speak of himself cannot be the Spirit. It has to be the witness. So what he uses here is a Greek word, H-E-A-U-T-O-U, Hito, Hito, which will be the recipient. Because he said, when he is come, he will guide you into all the truth. So the you that is guided will be the you that will hear. Huh? The you that will be guided into all the truth will be the you that will hear. So whatever you shall hear of the same shall hear will be the same that he guides. That shall he speak. The one that hears, the one that is guided, will be the one that will speak what he heard. Teaching good? Then he will show you that will speak what you heard, the things to come. So obviously the hearer and the guiding is in the same place. Whoever is being guided is the one that is hearing. So it's not that the spirit receives to give to you. The spirit is the revelation of what you have received. Because in the originals, the pronouns, for example... He will show you things to come is a silent pronoun in the Greek lexicon. I suggest that it is to be practically absent. All this is to get you to think. But the truth is, the verse is tricky because the guide Jesus and here is used for the blind. The guide. The blind is the one that receives direction. And the hearer in this instance 
will be his own witnesses. Now, pay attention. So the same, John 16, 4, I mean 14. Just pay attention, it will come together. John 16, 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. He will receive of mine, not he. The spirit does not receive. The spirit is received. So it can be the spirit that is receiving. Because the spirit does not receive, now it's the father. The spirit is received. So you will receive of mine. That is, he will show it unto you. You will receive of mine. The spirit does not receive. The spirit reveals. He uses the word anagelo. The Greek word anagelo. N A A N A Ana G E double L O, which is a disclosure. Now, this ministry is selective, those whom he chose. It's not a ministry for the church primarily, it's a ministry for Jesus' apostles. The ones that we often call the foundational apostles. And so they now show, they show what they receive to their audience. The apostles. They are recipients or their disciples. Whom he tells in Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. Look at what he told them, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Next verse. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Go and teach all nations. Now let's bring this into the Pauline revelation. Is it clear? Now let me read it so that you see what we just did. Should I make you see what we just did? John 16, 12. 13. The guy is confused. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Now watch, 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 watch. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you, the witnesses, into all the truth. For you shall not speak of yourselves. But whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak. And he will show you things to come. Does it now make sense? Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. To read that small reading is why I travel all that travel. 1 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Because in Bible doctrine, you have to be very careful so you don't read your thoughts in. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Next verse. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. We want to see that what Jesus said in John 16 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 is exactly what Paul also taught. How many of you have observed that all we've been doing is we see what Jesus taught and we see how Paul taught it in an advanced form by the spirit of Jesus. We saw heaven. We saw kingdom of God. We saw pneuma aletia. We saw apodexis. Are you following? We also saw faith. And we see Paul's faith, which is doctrine. Now we're looking at what Jesus said about the ministry of the witnesses and what Paul is going to say. And then we shall move into something else. The word search there is to investigate or to disclose. Look at verse 11, 1 Corinthians 2, 11. 
For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Give me verse 10. Verse 10 again. First Corinthians 2. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. The word search there is to investigate or to disclose. Now look at verse 11 and 12 and pay attention to we. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. 12. Now we. That we is not we. That we is the same chosen people. Because this we includes Paul. We, Paul and his group have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Notice that word we here is about to be clarified. So we, by identification, the we here is all believers, all of us, by identification, but in technical sense, just like we said, Paul said to them, when I came to you, in verse 1, First Corinthians 2, 1, so you know who the we are. In technical sense. And I brethren when I Paul came to you. Came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Declaring unto you. So this is to brethren. When I came to you brethren. I came not with excellence. I didn't come with oratory. Or wisdom. Secular wisdom. Declare unto you the testimony of God. Next verse. For I determine not to know anything among you brethren. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now then he now says, we. The we there is the class of people technically that came to the brethren. The people that came to the brethren. Like if I come to visit Power City and I said, I didn't come to you in excellency of wisdom or oratory. I came to you in demonstration of power that your feet should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. When we came to you, when we came to you, you are not part of the we. Because you didn't come to you. It is we that came to you. Are you following so when Paul now is saying when we technically is not everybody. Technically it's a group. Just like that group in John 16. Hey, are you in church? You know mathematics is early in the morning. <laughs> when your head is still fresh. Now, my speech and my preaching. So it's in line with that he is now saying that we have received. We have received my speech and my preaching. This is the reason why my preaching is the demonstration of the spirit. Which is of power because I have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God that we may know the things given to us of God. Sometimes it's good to have read the things said earlier. Like we saw the pretext. It became easy for us to know the we. So, so that you might know which pronoun belongs to who. Now notice what he says afterwards in verse 12. First Corinthians 2 12. Put it up for me. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 12. Praise God. First Corinthians 2 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Look at verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. 
Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Obviously, that verse 13 is the ministry of preaching and teaching. To know what he's talking about in the ministry of the apostles or as the ministry of the apostles, look at 1 Corinthians, the post text, chapter 3, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you <laughs> as unto spiritual. These are the same people he's been talking to since. But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I can't talk to you the way, there's a way we plan to talk to you when we're coming, but when we heard of the confusion among you and the division, we, we had to step down. Because then we understood that you have not grown. Are you following? Sometimes I go to some churches to preach. <laughs> I go with the velocity and intensity of revelation knowledge that we have in this church. But the moment I walk in there and I begin to speak, then I discover that we are in two different worlds. <laughs> so I stop. I step down. Then I look again. I'm still far. I step down. I step down. I step down. Sometimes I have to step down to parable level. Everything you need in life, Jesus has done it for you. If you believe it, shout amen. Amen. We have come down to parable level. Because now, I came to bless them. So I will have to look for how to bless them. And in such churches, not much can be said. So I'll find out that at the end of the day, what I plan in my notes as first service will be all the meeting. You didn't understand. I plan my notes. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day, my notes are well planned. So what I plan to exhaust for them in day one, I couldn't go beyond paragraph one. So at the end of the day is the one only stepped down that I ended up teaching. That says a lot about what the pastor is doing. And you say, oh, we are so blessed. In my mind, I'll say, praise God. Then in my mind, I'll say, if only you know what you didn't get, you won't be saying you are so blessed. Spiritual growth is very critical. I'm sure that's what happened in Corinth. Paul said, ah, ah. We came with the velocity of revelation. Then we discovered you are not even, you, you are not there. So now we have to speak to us unto babes. So we now started using parables. Eat bread, drink blood, which many churches are still doing today. <laughs> Far from light. And my brethren could not speak. I wanted, but I had to. To, to speak to you in a way that you can catch. It's a serious matter. There are some churches, if they come in to preach, it's not a breakthrough at all. It's suffering. I'm serious. But here I can meander anywhere. Glory to God. I love it here. Are you still here? Now, let's move a bit here. Now, so, Brother Paul is talking about this church. He says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. So that clarifies that the way there, he started out with. In verse 13, he says, comparing, comparing. The word comparing there is to combine. The word sukrino in the Greek. S-U-G-K-R-I-N-O. Sukrino. It means for you to put two things and look for what is identical in them. So in this instance, he says, spiritual information. Spiritual information with the person that has received the spirit. So the spirit therefore communicates the truth about Christ through men. 
The truth of Christ is communicated by the Spirit through men. And one of such men is Paul. And then he goes further and says in verse 14, 15, and 16 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Put it up for me. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Next verse. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we, say again, we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind. That is, he's talking about that communication. That is the communication we brought to this church is the reasoning of Christ. Remember where we read in John 16, he will reveal the things of me. And what he's saying in other words is a walk, a joint walk between the spirit and the witness. A joint work. That is, when the gospel is being preached, that is the spirit. Huh? When the gospel is being preached, that is the spirit convincing the world of sin. When the gospel is preached, that is the spirit convincing the world of sin. So it's an individual, it's not an individual, individualistic thing. It's not an individualistic thing. It's not something to say, well, it's just me, personal. Where somebody sits in his room, then the spirit begins to convince him. No, it's via the preaching of the gospel. So we cannot put it like this. When therefore Peter says that God gave Paul that Sophia in 2 Peter 3.15, that giving is selective. It's an acknowledgement of grace given to Paul. An acknowledgement of grace is selective. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the spirit there there's a general spirit for all believers and a selective one. The selective one has to do with his ministry. Because in John chapter 16, Jesus talked about all of us having the spirit within. Then he talks about the capacity to communicate spiritual truth which is given to the people that he chose. So, there are two classes of people he's talking to there. The one that we are all receiving communication from the selective people that he gave the spirit to. So, it's good not to generalize what is selective and not to be selective on what is generalized. So, in Bible study, you have to find out what is selective and what is generalized. So, always pick out the pronoun for each person. Now, so we can say therefore that Paul's spirit is Christ's communication. Paul's spirit is Christ's communication. What we have received gives the capacity to these folks to write. That is to people like Paul and the apostles. Because you know there's always a we, we. We. So it therefore means just like in John 16, 12, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Now listen. He never made that an open-ended statement. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. He never made it an open-ended statement. He said, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all of this truth. In other words, there will be a closure of that disclosure. He will guide you into all of this truth. You cannot bear them now. This is open. When he is come, he will guide you into all this truth. Closure. Did you follow that? You cannot bear them now open 
when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all of the truth closure the reason why it's important for that emphasis is because there are people that will tell you that Paul and the apostles didn't write everything. That the spirit is still revealing more books of the Bible. So because of those kind of fallacies, you need to understand that there's a closure with the select apostles. Is the apostles he was telling. What I want to tell you. You can bear it now. But post resurrection. The Numa Aletia. Will guide you into all of this truth closure. That is everything that you need. As apostles to lay foundation. Will be given to you and ended. So that after you there is nobody else. To lay anything. That's why now Paul will say, No other foundation can any man lay than that which we have laid Christ Jesus. Did you follow that? That's why Paul will say to the church in Galatia, If I or an angel from heaven, meaning there's a closure, what we have taught you, you can add to it, you can take from it. That is the total truth about God. Am I teaching good here? There is nothing more to know about God outside the canon. If Jesus did not teach it, if Moses did not teach it, if Paul did not teach it, it's fraud. The spirit is not revealing new things. There is nothing else. There's a closure. The spirit has guided that, that class of we into all of the truth. Now, mm, that emphasis is key. Very important. Are you still here? So, when he comes, he will guide into all of the truth. So there will be a closure of that disclosure. And Peter, who should know? Peter, who should know? Recognizes that Paul had a Sophia. Shouldn't Peter know? Huh? He should know. So that means the spirit of truth will be the advanced teaching of Christ. That is, it is Christ advancing his own teachings in the men that he chose. And one of those men he chose is Paul. He advances what he taught in the men that he chose. Now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now which is a key fact in this communication. That word freely given is the word charis. 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 You know charis, charisma, charismata, charismatic, charis. Freely given to us. So we want to observe because that is what Paul just said. The things that are freely given. Now if we accept that Paul is Christ teaching the scripture in an advanced format in full disclosure, then we must be able to see anything Paul is teaching in what Jesus taught. If Paul is the advancement of what Jesus taught by the spirit of Jesus, then we should see what Jesus taught in what Paul taught. 
Because there must be consistency of theology. Are we together here? So look at John. John was one of the disciples who had the privilege of being one of Jesus' disciples in the four Gospels. In John 1.14, look at what John said. <clears throat> John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. He uses the word charis. Charis. Just like Paul uses the word Caris. A definite fact is Jesus is God who became flesh. God who became flesh. And he calls him the only begotten of God. And now Paul is saying the things that the spirit reveals as what is freely given to us of God Caris. So let's match that. The eyewitnesses recognizes it just like we have read now. John says, we beheld this glory and it was full of caris and the truth. Aletia. Then Jesus' words. When he spoke to the disciples and they said to him, show us the father. He said unto them, have I been this long time with you and yet you have not known the father? Because the words he was speaking were the words of the father. He was showing the character of the father. He was showing the father in emotions. He was showing the father in motions. And so in Luke chapter 6, one of those places where he made a distinction. Look at it. Luke chapter 6 verse 30. Luke 6 30. Give to every man that accept of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Next verse. And as you will that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Next verse. If you love them which love you, what tank have ye? That word tank there is the word caris. Tank, caris. What tank, what caris, or what grace have ye? Look at verse 33 and 34 of the same chapter 6 of Luke. And if you do good to them, which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. 34. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much gain. 35. But love you your enemies. Do good and lend. Hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Wow. So Jesus therefore describes God and his giving as freely given. So in Paul's revelation, we must see the spirit of God in this giving. All kinds of giving in the, in the New Testament can be called didomai. Didomai. D-I-D-O-M-I. Didomai. D-I-D-O-M-I. In the Greek. But then you now find different descriptions of, that describes this giving. You know, Jesus said he will show you things to come. And the things to come are the things that are freely given. Is that right? 1 Corinthians 2.12. So you look at the words of Jesus. The things he did and what Paul wrote and you will find everything identical. Let's go further. So Paul's grace, which he uses often in his letters, is not Paul's coinage. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. 
His books open with grace and close with grace. All his books. Alright? Now, so when Paul says the grace of God is the same thing Jesus said here about the Heavenly Father who gives to the thankful and the unthankful freely, which is grace. So when I pick what Jesus said about the Father and what Paul says about Jesus, we are saying the same things. Because look at what Paul says, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Glory! For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may be rich. And he says, God gave, he that spared not his son, but gave him up for us. How? Freely. How shall he not with him also? How? Caris. That's your heavenly father. So every teaching of grace will have two dimensions. Number one, what God did to us. And number two, becomes an example for our daily living. What God did for us, then what God did for us now becomes our example for our daily living. And you will find out that that ministry was called Caris. Of course, charisma, charismata, and a large pool of words from it. So Paul is saying exactly what Jesus said. Jesus will say, the father does this, do it too. Paul will say, this is the grace of God, you are saved. Then he will now say, reflect it. Give. Serve. So he is mirroring what Jesus has taught. And what Jesus has demonstrated. However, in an advanced form. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have in all sufficiency. Grace carries freely. I mean if you know that everything that we get from God is freely given. Somebody shall freely give him. So God says the same way. So Paul is teaching that the same way Jesus demonstrated God's character in the things he said and the things he did. Paul now taught that we have received of that grace. We too should in return be gracious to us people. Receive, I mean, give to people expecting to get nothing in return. Are we teaching? You know, some of you won't give to anybody until you have calculated what you will get back. That's not God. That's not your heavenly father. How many of you know when Jesus decided, when God decided to die for you in, in Jesus, he, he was not expecting anything. From you. True? He wasn't expecting anything from you. First of all, what will you expect from a refugee? In fact, refugee status is better than what we were. Eh? We were, we were captives. We were prisoners of no value. Sinners. Lost. Broke. Eh? No value. Worthless. Then God gave us his value. Expecting nothing from us. Are we in the building? So today I am what I am. It's not of, it's not of struggle. It's not of labor. His grace. Whatever God gives is free. He heals you free. The doctor gives you medication and gives you side effects. And you pay for side effects. Eh? You pay the doctor to operate you and forget scissors inside you and operate you again to remove it. You pay with thanksgiving. 
God heals you without a scar, without pain, and without losing anything for free. I'm teaching good this morning. Salvation is free. How many of you know that the most expensive, expensive things in life are free? Huh? Breathe in and out. How much did you pay? Stop breathing for two minutes. We don't have an ambulance. Everything God gives is free. Now just like our father, he expects us also to give people free of the things we have. We give freely. Expecting nothing in return. Your brother says, hey brother, I need something. Don't calculate. Are you able to pay? I will give you, but you will pay me back with interest. Bible says, if it's in your power, I'll give it to you. Tell him, bros, have it. He said, when, when will I pay? Pay for what? Of his fullness have we all, both me and you, we have all received. Now, that doesn't affect your business. If you're a businessman, do business. But don't just be business. Also do brotherly. Have a side where you are a blessing to the body of Christ. Have a side where you are doing business. So that you will say, Papa has said everything. Let's empty the shop. Brethren, come and collect freely. No, there is business. Anyway, I don't need to say that. You should know that. Amen. Say, I have received all of God's goodness. Free of charge. Forgiveness of sins. Acceptance before God. Righteousness. Justification. Oneness with God. Seated in heaven. All my sins forgiven. Free. Jesus taught it that way. Paul taught it that way. The charis, the grace, the charisma. We shall explore a little bit in the next service. But are you blessed in this service? Somebody shout hallelujah. Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you. Glory to God. Zeko Balatata. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Don't to somebody say I am blessed. I have received all of God's goodness free of charge. The greatest blessing is my eternity secured by the death of Christ. My name is written in the book of life. I am forgiven. 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 Forgiven forever in Christ Jesus. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Are you excited about salvation? Can we just celebrate salvation for a minute? Glory! Glory to God! Amen! Father, I pray for everybody in this building, those online, those watching on television, those listening on radio, and everyone in our campus is connected to this service. I ask that this revelation grows big on our inside until nothing else matters. In the name of Jesus. And I decree that every voice of doubt and guilt and fear and condemnation is silenced right now. In the name of Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we rejoice that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And I decree that everyone here, by virtue of the light that comes through your word, walks in the light. In the name of Jesus, sick bodies be healed, barriers terminated, in the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon this household of God. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Well go ahead and celebrate God's word this morning. Glory. Glory. Amen. 
Say with me, I have received grace and for grace. Therefore, I am gracious towards the brethren. I didn't hear a good amen. Now, it's important for you to know that the whole of this week, we are not coming to the house here, even though teachings will come from the house here, but we're not going to gather here from tomorrow till next Saturday. We're going to gather in the houses every day because we want to be able to pray in our clusters for our immediate communities and environments. And this will be replicated all over our campuses in all over the world. Wherever the campus coordinators already have received that instruction that all of our campuses are broken into clusters. Everywhere all over the world we're going to be meeting in clusters throughout this week from tomorrow till next Saturday as we continue with the fast. So everybody ought to be in the right places. For us in Nigeria it has to be quarter to six you are in your cluster. Six on the dot we are live and of course we continue till 8 o'clock. It's two hours teaching and prayer together. Then we go home and continue 9 to 11, teaching and prayer again. Then in the morning, we, we, you know, we pray in our homes at 5 to 6 a.m. It continues the whole of this week. Our fasting is 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. You break the fast when you're breaking your fast in the morning. All right. Then also the house pastors have guidelines on what to do and our campus coordinators will give guidelines to all the, you know, the coordinators of the clusters all over the world. Can I have a powerful amen? I want to take your offerings, but remember we, have, we are committed to a particular fund that we're raising and we have the end of this month as our deadline. For those of you that may not have been informed or aware or you've not been around, we're raising $100,000 and uh, we've given everybody an opportunity to be committed to us. That's the first project we're doing in 2022. And we want to challenge those of you that have not been around, have not been a part of it. You're watching online, you're in the building physically this morning, you're in our campuses on television or on radio that we're raising this money. Remember, somebody gave for you to be enriched with this world. If you give more, people will get enriched. So if you're, you, you're watching or you're just hearing me for the first time and you are feeling like, yeah, I really want to be a part of giving to a righteous cause as good as this, and you want to send your own commitments, there are bank details we have designated for this particular givings. If you send an email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, we will email you the bank accounts and all the details to give to us this funding. Wherever you're watching, the email is Dr. Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we want to thank you for giving. Those of you that are already redeeming your commitments, we want to thank you for your, your faithfulness and your, you know, your, your commitment to see that we raise this money and get the projects carried out. We want you to know we love you and we're praying for you. You will have much more money this year and together we will do more for the kingdom. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. All right, grab your offerings. Let's give in honor of the word of God this morning, the honor of God's word. <clears throat> Every time we teach you the word, we give you an opportunity to give in honor of the word of God. You don't want to miss next, next service because I'm going to begin to, to open up a dimension of teaching on worship. Jesus is teaching on worship and Paul's apodexis on Jesus' worship. It's going to be very powerful because it's important to understand what real worship is, you know. Not religious worship, what true worship is. So you don't want to miss the next service. Grab your offerings. We want to give in faith right now. Those of you online, the banking details are scrolling. Those of you on television, the banking details are also scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, we read the bank accounts for you in the other studio in Ask the Counselor now. Lift up your offerings. Let's pray as we give and rejoice. Father, we give from hearts that are stirred up with love. Hearts that are stirred up with generosity by the Spirit of God. Give Giving is our DNA. We give in honor, we give in acknowledgement, and we give in response to the love of God. And we thank you for the privilege to honor your word and to honor the work of Christ in this ministry. And we thank you that through our givings, the gospel continues to reach the ends of the earth. And I pray that everyone giving this morning, your needs are met supernaturally. Great grace is upon you in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Online brethren, we're going to sign you up, but we look forward to connecting with all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And remember, all of these meetings, 
through the week from tomorrow till next Saturday will be live on all our platforms, television, radio, and social media. So in case you are in a country where there is no campus, you can follow yours online and be part of what we're doing through the course of this week. Can I have a good amen? All right, online brethren, we love you. We look forward to seeing all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! We trust all right. that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.